Alright gents, we're back here at Tactical Rifleman. Hey, right off the bat, if you like these videos, be sure to click subscribe and click that little uh, chime button so you'll get notified whenever we put out any new videos. We do uh, all kinds of polls, things like that. All right, um, so anyways, don't be sure to subscribe. All right, real quick, we're out here with Bill from Asset. All right, uh, Bill, what is Asset? Tell us a little bit about the company. So Asset's a uh, security services and training company. Uh, Asset's actually an acronym for the full name of the company, Advanced Security Services Evaluation and Training. Uh, I manage the training for the company, and one of the main training services we offer is mobility training. Uh, we do a lot of training for military teams. Um, and uh, also for civilians as well. So, but specifically, this vehicle, it's it doesn't look normal here in the U.S. Why is that? Exactly. So most of the teams that we're training are going overseas and, and driving vehicles that are indigenous to those areas. Uh, so what we did is bring foreign vehicles here, uh, to, so they can actually train on the actual vehicles. We do a lot of mechanical repair stuff, so it's good for them to work on the exact same type of vehicle that they're going to have to wrench on or drive. Uh, so you do like. Uh, right hand drive, standards, automatics, a little bit of everything. Absolutely, yep. Outstanding. So. Well, what do you got for us? What are we going to cover today? All right, so today we're, uh, we're going to talk about just an overview of the high lift jack. Uh, those vehicles we're just talking about downrange, and a lot of the tactical vehicles come with these jacks on the vehicles. Um, very simple device, but a lot of guys don't get a chance to actually uh, work with them much until they, were, they have to use them. They were bolted so. on our Humvees, but a lot of guys uh, never use them. They'd get Humvees stuck all the time out in the middle of the desert and never once tried to use a high lift jack. Yep, and the simplicity of it makes it easy to figure out, but it also makes it pretty dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. So we're going to talk about the basic function of it, some of the uh, safety issues, uh, and then we'll have a couple other videos that will go deeper into the different uses and talk more about the safety okay. problems in there. So first off, just getting it off the truck and being able to use it. Uh, a lot of times they're mounted outside. They could be um, uh, rusty or covered in tan paint maybe, uh, so they don't work that well. So uh, if, you're gonna, if you have a jack on the vehicle, you should have an accessory kit. We use zipper bags and um, just put all, all the supporting equipment in there and any kind of lube there, or motor oil or something like that, just to get it going again. Um, so we'll talk about the, uh, the main pieces of this real quick. Um, starting with the obvious, we've got the base. This long piece here is called the shaft and of course the handle. And then down here we have the running gear. Uh, assembly of all the moving parts I'll go into in a second and the opposing piece for that if you do need it for certain uh, certain uh, uses uh, is the top clamp so down here on the running gear um, you have the uh, the climbing pins right here they alternate the load as you're lifting the the, uh, the vehicle or whatever it is you're doing with the with the jack the reversing handle uh, is pretty simple it's in the up position right now which is how you crank up uh, and when you need to go down you just hit it down like that and you notice how those climbing pins come out which I'll talk more about in a second um, one other piece here is the, uh, the shear bolt on the back. So as you're jacking, you'll notice the handle is pushing down on that bolt down here, uh, which is bearing the load. This, this is the nose piece, by the way. Uh, this nose piece, as it's lifting the vehicle, uh, will be supported by this lower climb, climbing pin as you're pressing down. So when you're pressing down on the handle, you're putting load through this bolt onto the lower climbing pin as the uh, running gear moves up to uh, latch in that upper climbing pin and then as you bring the handle up you'll see that lower climbing pin come up and click into place. So the reason I'm talking about that shear bolt there is uh, this is one of the safety pieces here. This thing is rated at 4,600 pounds. Uh, that's the, recommend, uh, the manufacturer recommendation to not exceed as far as the load on this nose right here. Uh, it's tested to 7,000 pounds uh, before it fails. Um, the specific failure point there is that shear bolt. So as you're trying to lift more than this thing is supposed to hold, more than 7,000 pounds roughly, that shear bolt will be the failure point. That's the part that's designed to break first. Yeah, exactly. So the load is still being supported by that lower climbing pin if that happens. So the worst that'll happen there is that bolt shears, the handle goes down unexpectedly, maybe you fall, maybe you get a little bit injured, but the jack will not collapse. Mm -hmm. It's basically a fusible link to prevent it from failing and dropping nice. the, the load of the truck onto somebody or whatnot. So. Make sense? Cool. Cool. Um, let's see. So when you, uh, when you store these on the vehicle, they should be in this position with the running gear all the way down and that lever in the up position because you'll notice for this uh, running gear to move up and down that shaft, it has to kind of ratchet through those pins, which gives it a little bit of resistance. If you store it and move it on the, or uh, move, if you store it on the vehicle with the lever, the reversing lever in the down position, both those pins are out. This thing can move freely around, knock somebody in the head if you roll over or something like that, or break real hard, depending on how it's mounted. So it should be like that when you pull it off the vehicle. And then we, when we go to put it in position here to lift on the vehicle, we're just gonna pick a spot here just for the sake of demonstration. 
Uh, you notice this uh, top clamp, there's quite a few pieces on these jacks and um, it's common for people to reconfigure them for different uses. So in this case, if I'm about to lift this vehicle up, I don't want to scratch the crap out of the door here. So uh, we're just going to take this off real quick. And we have our... Uh, I'll hold it. You grab all the little pieces. Thank you. So we use a zipper bag for all these pieces. And if you're doing all this stuff out in the woods, it's easy to lose all this stuff. So just throw them back in the zipper bag. I'll go bag it. You keep talking. Roger. There you go. I'll give you that piece. Nice. Oh, my God. All right, so uh, we got that out of the way. Uh, usually use a hand or you can just, uh, a rag or a t-shirt or something like that to protect the body of the vehicle. So again, this is the position, it, or the setup, it, the setting it should be in as it comes off the vehicle. We're gonna bring it up into position. This is assuming we find a good lifting point. Uh, there'll be another video that talks about picking a specific lifting point. Uh, but just for now, let's talk about hooking it up right there. And uh, one other point of safety there before we start lifting is you wanna make sure, look at this in two, two different 90 degree angles and check that shaft for plumb. Make sure it's straight up and down as I look at it here. Look at it this way, it looks like it's straight up and down because that base uh, has quite a bit of wobble there. And if you're not nice and straight on it, it may end up falling as you lift it up. So we got it in position. You notice that ratcheted up. Just like I said before, I'll start cranking. It's, it's bearing the load down here, moving up to that upper climbing pin and then alternating as we go up. As I lift though, I don't wanna put my head in here once there's a load on there at all uh, because if my hand slips off of that, it can come flying up with a lot of force, cause an injury or knock you out. So Keep it out of that triangle. Yeah, so once you get going there, you can come out of that uh, danger area right there and just lift and make sure everything's going well. Uh, and keep an eye on that shaft because as you lift, the vehicle pivots and may roll. I do have a wheel chocked right now, so it can't roll. Um, so make sure you do that kind of stuff. So but we'll go deeper into that in the other video. So that's how we go up. You go up until uh, you do whatever you need to, or it's in a position to do what you need to do. This clip right here is to hold the handle up and out of the way so you don't accidentally bump it moving around and knock it out from under the vehicle. So the configuration we have set up here will allow us to eventually jack it high enough to get the tire off the ground and change the tire if we had a flat, for example. Um, another, re uh, I'm sorry, uh, let's say we, we do the tire change and to go back down. Um, notice I'm holding the handle positively, so positive control of the handle is a big safety piece with this. If we got the shaft straight up and down and we keep control of the handle the whole time we're operating, we should be pretty safe with this thing. So it's time to go back down. I'm just gonna hit that reversing lever down. You notice that uh, that lower climbing pin came out. So it's, it's bearing the weight right here. We're just gonna go the opposite of what we did before. So as we come down, you're gonna have to go until that upper climbing pin pops out. Now all the load is here, so I have to be super careful with it okay. outside that danger area. And then watch the pins go. And just pay attention, watch the pins as you go and make sure that the vehicle's not gonna move around and fall. So once it gets to that point where there's no load on it, as the handle comes up, if you watch the, uh, both the climbing pins, you'll see they both pop out, and then usually the jack will start to fall on its own after that, so be and careful. We're done. Someone might be under there unhooking a strap or something, don't let them get hurt, so. So that's uh, the simple operation of this uh, for the purpose of lifting. What else can we do with it? We can lift, that was a scenario where we might be lifting the, the truck to change the tire, like a flat tire. This would be a scenario where the vehicle's stuck and uh, maybe this tire sunk down into the mud. I want it to, um, to get back up on hard terrain if the axle's touching the ground. So we can use this accessory we'll go into in the next video, but lift the tire up, put stuff under the tire. Um, and there's also a uh, hand winching application we can do with this jack, which we'll show you in a second. All right, so if I didn't have a winch on the front of my vehicle, I could use this as a winch, basically. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's right. a four-foot shaft, so you can pull four feet at a time uh, to get your vehicle unstuck. This is a simple setup there. Uh, we have another video that goes into detail about the setup itself, but just as an example there, uh, it's already all set up. And just like before, those climbing pins allow it to do the pulling action as we go. And we, right, right now we have the truck. Um, so you could yeah. only go four feet at a time. You'd have to yep. reset it. Yeah, right. there's a whole process to that. Uh, it's covered in the other video. So. Cool, cool, cool. Um, let's go take a look at uh, some of the accessories, some accessories. Other common accessories, and also the way to store this thing safely in a vehicle. So. Roger that. All right, uh, we're gonna look at some of the accessories for the jack. The jack itself is only uh, roughly $100. It depends on which model you get, uh, but they're all pretty close to $100. So it's a pretty cheap tool. It gives you a lot of uh, options if you're in a bad situation. And then they have accessories that are still pretty cheap to add to that to make a, a lot better value there. So let's go over a few of those things. Uh, starting with, uh, you saw this earlier with the red jack by the front tire. This is called the lift mate. Those two black hooks are designed to go, you know, engage the wheel so you can pick the tire up off the ground by the wheel uh, to get debris under to get it back up on, on uh, good terrain to be able to move the vehicle. So for a stuck problem, not for a tire change problem. So this is called the lift mate. This is the bumper lift. Uh, so this goes on to the, uh, to the nose. 
engages there, and you see the uh, get it backwards. Get the uh, the black hook is designed to hook into a stamped steel bumper that you may have on a stock bumper. Um, if it doesn't have all the cool hookup points like some some off-road bumpers have, you still use your high lift jack on those bumpers by having that accessory. So it's a good one to have if you got stock steel uh, bumpers, front or back. Um, we also have the plastic base. It just gives it a, a wider surface area if you're on soft terrain. Uh, this high lift brand one keeps the, uh, the base of the jack in the center so it helps it uh, not slip out from under you too because if you're in that soft terrain it's a little less predictable. It may be a, a little bit more dangerous so this helps you stay safe and also make it work so you don't just pump this four feet down into the ground. Um, you can also use other stuff like a spare tire or a piece of wood or whatever if you want. So, um, This top piece here, you saw us take it off earlier so we didn't damage the body of the truck. Again, this is called the top clamp. This comes um, from the factory on the High Lift Extreme, which is the basically the gray version of this. It's almost identical, it just has that top clamp. Um, so we can obviously clamp stuff together for having to do some type of repair work on the trail. Um, we can move this around and go behind it, turn this around if we need to. We can have them work against each other as a spreader to spread stuff out. Uh, some ranchers, these are common on ranches, and uh, they'll use them to uh, pull to tighten fencing and stuff like that. So just as an, uh, food for thought, all the different things they can do uh, with that extra piece. The, um, the regular non-extreme jack has uh, almost the same piece. It's just not quite as heavy duty, and it doesn't have this top clamp that comes with the extreme has a, a grab hook where you can put chain in there and you have two different points for three quarter inch shackles to be used for uh, hand winching as well. So um, stuff comes off easy. These guys always uh, end up reconfiguring this for different uses every time they need it because it's never quite the same. And again, a zipper bag kind of helps you keep all this stuff. When you're doing all this stuff in haste, trying to get out of there, or get back on mission or whatnot, you don't want to lose all your crap. So just throw it in a zipper bag, get it all reconfigured when you get home. Um, Last thing there for storage before we talk about storing it. Um, this is the, uh, it's a polyurethane jack handle isolator. Basically just keeps it from flopping around whenever you have it mounted. And then we have it, we have mounts um, on the square tubing here on these side rails. They have round tube clamps that go around round tubing if you have a roll cage, for example. Um, similar design there. Just basically any two studs that'll go through the hole. Uh, the holes anywhere on the shaft there give you a lot of options and you got the uh, jack handle isolator in between there So it can't slide off while you're driving around keeps it from rattling around too much nice and secure So, so good cheap tool cheap accessories gives you a ton of options if you're on your own and you're in a bad situation so. Nice all right gents, you know the deal if you got any questions or comments be sure to leave them below again that subscription button make sure you push that along with the little bell and uh, check out the other stuff at the end of the video so you can get some of this new cool tactical rifleman swag. Bill, always a pleasure. No Brother, problem. thanks for, uh, thanks for uh, teaching us about the high lift jack. No problem. Thanks. Take care. If you like this video, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, make sure you follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter so you don't miss out on anything.